Welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing my thought process and the steps I made to make the new animations and behaviors for the Acolytes. We'll be focusing on animations for battle mode where when the enemy group encounters the player, they will engage with you in battle. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm June and I'm making a game where you play as a wisp who can transform into different monster types to fend off human settlers invading your island home. We're already live on Steam and if you want to support us, you can add us to your Steam wishlist. Or if you like devlog videos, or simply want to follow the development of the game, feel free to subscribe to get updated. Now, let's start by making animations for engagement. We want our acolyte to engage with the player in battle once it sees the player, but we want them to be in a safe distance. Since the acolyte uses range abilities, we want it to be far away from the player casting range attacks. So here, we already have a code for the enemy behavior from the previous torch model. Let's modify it and change the AI class to Acolyte and then modify the code to add the Acolyte type enemy to it. Also, let's change the attack range settings. Now, let's test if the range works. We'll expect the Acolyte to start attacking when he reaches the stop radius, which we change to 8. It works, but it's too close. Let's adjust it to 14 and engage at 16. Alright. That should be a good range. Let's set the range in this setting for now. We already have existing animations from the previous torch animator. As you can see, when we test the acolyte, it acts like a torch bearer since we have the torch bearer's animation controller. So to make a unique movement set for the acolytes, let's create a new animator specifically for them. Let's duplicate the previous one and rename it to Mercenary Acolyte. Then let's assign it to the acolyte model. Then, let's modify the animations for each state. Let's start with the walking and running animations. So, it's running forward animations is a bit weird. Let's change it. Now, let's test it. Okay, now that looks better. Now, let's change the attack animation to make it cast spells when it reaches the attack range. First, let's delete some animation states that are not needed. So we don't really need two attack variations for the Acolyte. So let's delete the state and rename the current attack state to Casting. Then let's add the Casting and Attacking animation. Now let's test it. It's too fast. Let's slow the animation down a bit. This speed is better, but the casting is too abrupt. Let's change it so that we do some channeling loop first before the Acolyte releases the magic. Let's add a channeling state animation and link it to the casting state. Let's add in the conditions to trigger this animation. So we can see in our animator, there are lots of useless animations. For instance, the dodge counter. We don't really need it. Let's nerf the Acolyte a bit. Let's not give him counter since he's already ranged. Let's also remove all guarding aspects since he does not have any weapon or shield to defend itself. The plan is to make the Acolyte flee if it wants to defend itself. Let's make it flee if the player hits him, which we'll be making at the later part of this video. Now, let's test the Acolyte with the modified animator. Let's have him run far back after dodging when he's hit. Oops! Let's modify the animation root motion and maybe slow down the animation a bit. Now he freezes. Let's change the animation to allow it to loop. Now let's test it. Looks good. Next, let's make the spell for the Acolyte. First, let's add events to the animation so that when it's played, we will show the spell forming and launching. Then, let's add an event for the launching. Let's call it launch spell. This will call the function launch spell when the animation hits the frame. Now, let's do the casting animation. Let's call it casting spell. This will call the function once the starting frame for this animation plays. Now let's make the script and test it. It works. Now let's add the magic prefab to it. First, let's select a design for our magic ball. Here are some prefabs. Let's select this one, then let's create a parent game object and add a point light to make it glow. Then, let's modify the size and the particles. Then, let's give it a trail so that for every distance it travels, it will emit particles. Now, let's test it. Looks good. Now, let's link this with our script. 
First, let's make the prefab small. Then let's make it grow when the casting spell event from the animation is triggered. Now let's have the spell move towards the player once the release spell event from the animation is triggered. For some reasons, we stumbled upon several unforeseen outcomes that obviously needed fixing. Let's fix all of them. While fixing this, so you have noticed, I'm regularly posting devlog videos weekly, so if you want to get updated when new videos come out, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get notified. So finally we fixed the problem. Now let's make a script where if the wall collides with the player, it will make a speed debuff. Then let's make some animations so that when you're hit, you'll be crippled. Then, let's make a timer for the speed debuff to disappear. Looking great, but the problem with this is that it's too overpowered. When the spell chases you with no chance of evading it no matter what dodging skills you have, the spell will always chase you like a homing missile. So to fix this, let's nerf the spell to make it remove its homing ability when it's near the player, to give the player a chance to evade or dodge. This looks good now, but as of the moment, the player can still attack while under the debuff. Let's add a feature where the debuff will silence the player's ability to use attack skills when the player is hit by the spell. Then let's only allow guarding skills when the player is under the debuff. Now let's test everything we've done so far. As you can see, the Acolyte's attack looks good, but when we attack it, a lot of problems arise. So let me fix that by resetting the casting of the spell when the Acolyte is hit. Now let's test everything we've made so far. And if you like what you've seen so far, consider liking the video, it really helps a lot in growing our community. Speaking of community, our Whistlelight community is growing steadily and a lot of you are engaging in the comments below. If you have thoughts and suggestions, any ideas you would like to chip in, feel free to comment below. One of my goals is to make this game development journey community driven. Engage with the community and be part of the development. In our next video, we'll be making behaviors for the Acolyte when he's within a group. We want him to find a teammate to defend him if the player is near him, so see you in the next video.